Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I will be looking into stem cells, and this is from the A-level biology curriculum. So let's begin. So just looking at the definition of what stem cells are. Stem cells are just unspecialized cells and that can differentiate into specialized cells. Uh, so um, first we start with a stem cell that's a completely uh, undifferentiated cell. It's not, un it's not specialized but then it can differentiate into more specialized cells which will be used in our body. So for example, muscle cells, blood cells, uh, skin cells, nerve cells, uh, and other cells we need. So differentiation is just a process uh, by which stem cells become specialized. Now there's four uh, main types of uh, stem cells that you need to be aware of. So starting with the most unspecialized cells, we have the totipotent cells. Then we have the pluripotent cells, uh, the multipotent cells, and finally the unipotent cells. So as we go down um, this list, the more specialized we become, and we'll go through them in more detail now. All right, so first looking at totipotent stem cells. So totipotent stem cells are able to divide and produce any type of body cell. So they are quite useful uh, as they can form any type of specialized cell later on, um, which not all of these stem cells can do. Okay, so how do these totipotent stem cells uh, form any body cell? Now, during development of these body cells, the totipotent st stem cells can translate only part of their DNA, uh, which can lead to cell specialization. Now, there's so many students who don't understand uh, how cell specialization works so i'm going to be looking at this in more detail now now what you need to understand first is if we have any type of body cell so if we were to just compare two type of body cells so we might get a muscle cell and we might get a skin cell now if we were to look at the genes of these two cells they would be exactly the same now this is the misconception that forms so if students ask uh, how can they have the same genes when they look different, when they have different proteins? Now, this is where cell specialization and turning genes on and off comes in. So if I was to just look at a stem cell, so as you can see, all the genes in this are turned on. And this is why this is a unspecialized cell. Now, if I, if I wanted a specialized cell, so for example, a liver cell, what I have to do is I have to turn all the other genes off which do not code for uh, that liver cell. So all the genes that in that genome. So for example, we have a muscle gene, uh, a nerve gene, a skin cell gene. So I want to turn all of them off to only have my liver uh, gene on. So as you can see here, so I've turned all the other genes off um, and I only have the liver gene turned on. So what this does is so when the translation of this uh, DNA or that gene would be occurring, we would not be producing the proteins which code, for example, uh, for a muscle cell. We would only be uh, translating uh, genes which would code uh, for a liver cell. And that's how we would end up producing our specialized liver cell. But that does not mean, so a liver cell uh, still has the genes for a muscle uh, and, um, for example, a skin cell, but we are not coding for them that gene is turned off in the genome. The only genes that are turned on would be our liver cell genes. So this is how cell specialization occurs. Now just be aware that uh, totipotent stem cells only occur for a limited time in the early mammalian embryos uh, because we end up specializing uh, our stem cells. All right, so now looking at the pluripotent stem cells. So these pluripotent stem cells can differentiate into most cells. So they can differentiate into all body cells. Um, and there's just a few exceptions they can't differentiate into. So for example, the cells in the placenta. Um, now they can divide in unlimited numbers. Uh, so you might have a stem cells uh, and it'll just continue to divide um, and keep dividing. It's not really like the totipotent stem cells which will end up differentiating really quickly and these again are found in the embryos so totipotent stem cells are found in the early very early stages of the embryo 
but they can be found in the later stages of the embryo. And these are quite useful in treating human disorders. So for example, skin diseases. Uh, so if you have a burnt skin, you might be able to use these pluripotent stem cells uh, to regenerate the cells of the skin. There are a few downsides to these pluripotent stem cells, uh, such as these involve destroying embryos. So when we are done with our treatment, uh, the leftover embryo would be destroyed. Now this is very unethical because this is potentially killing a baby or taking a life. Now also these stem cells now also these stem cells may keep dividing a and may uh, divide uncontrollably so they may lead to formation of tumors. All right, so now looking at multipotent stem cells. Uh, so these stem cells are found in mature mammals so they won't be found in the embryos anymore. So for example, they can be found in the bone marrow. Uh, however, they cannot divide to uh, form any type of cell. They can only form a limited number of cells so for example if these were my bone marrow cells they can only differentiate into white blood cells and red blood cells so red uh, so blood cells uh, but they won't be able to differentiate into for example skin cells or neuron cells so they can only differentiate into a limited number of cells okay so finally looking at unipotent stem cells so these unipotent stem cells are found again in mature mammals and they can only divide into one type of cell and uh, so for example if this was our unipotent stem cell this is only dividing into the bone marrow cell if this was my unipotent stem cells this is only dividing into my heart muscle cell or my uh, cardiomyocytes so they can only divide into one type of cell all right so now looking at induced pluripotent stem cells or ips cells so these IPS cells can be produced from adult somatic cells or adult uh, body cells using appropriate protein transcription factors. So what we're essentially doing is we're getting, for example, a skin cell, which is a, a body cell or a somatic cell, uh, and that's specialized. And what we're doing using transcription factors, we are converting that into stem cells, which are on specialized cells. So before we looked at converting from a uh, going from a specialized stem cell into a unspecialized cell now we're doing the complete opposite so for example in this case we have a liver cell which is specialized and it has some of the genes uh, turned on and some of the genes turned off now what we can do is using appropriate transcription factors we can turn on uh, these genes so we can turn on all the genes that have been turned off before and that will mean that our cell will become unspecialized. Now these are quite useful uh, because we are not using an embryo. We are using cells from a human body cell. So we'll be able to gain consent from the person who we are using the cells from, uh, which can't be done in the case of embryo. Looking at the for and against of using stem cells. So looking at for first, so this potential for alleviating human suffering. And there's so many diseases and illnesses that can be treated uh, by stem cells. So for example, skin disease uh, and diabetes. So they can be quite useful for reducing human suffering. Uh, stem cells uh, can be used from IVF, uh, which would otherwise be uh, discarded. So they would be uh, discarded anyway. So why not just use them uh, to treat um, diseases? And embryos should not be considered human at a very early stage. So just after fertilization has occurred, we can't really say that um, the embryo is a human at that stage. Maybe later on, uh, but not at the very uh, earlier stage. Uh, objections outweighed by not using stem cells to alleviate human sufferings. It can be argued that if we don't use stem cells, we would be causing the suffering which could otherwise uh, be avoided. Now looking at the other side of using stem cells, it can be argued that embryonic stem cells are potential babies. They will eventually go on to uh, become babies, become a life, and that's why it should not be used. Um, there's also objection on religious grounds. 
uh, people who uh, have who have religious beliefs may argue that uh, by using stem cells we are uh, taking a life we are playing god the pressure on women might be added to produce surplus embryos so that more stem cells could be gained from it uh, cloning or these uh, stem cell techniques may get into the wrong hands and this may lead to the production of designer babies so people uh, might choose to have a baby which is more intelligent uh, or maybe taller um, so that could be a bad and unexpected dangerous consequences so stem cells are only in the in, in its infancy stages for now so we don't really know all the disadvantages of it yet and there may be even the worst consequences that could come out and stem cells can continue to divide producing a tumor which we've looked at before especially with the pluripotent uh, stem cells so that could be causing a disadvantage instead of and benefiting us thank you so much for watching this video if you did like this video don't forget to subscribe to see more of these and you can watch my recent videos by clicking on the links popping up thank you